Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and a few weeks ago we upgraded the Ender 3 to Direct Drive, and the main reason really was to be able to print in Flexible. So in this video, we're going to test that out. So a couple weeks ago, I was at Rapid TCT in Detroit for work where Ninja Tech was there, and they were awesome enough to send me home with a few samples of their different materials. Uh, they've got Ninja Flex, they've got Cheetah, they've got Armadillo, and another one called Eel, which I will be talking about in a separate video of its own. Um, but these are three materials that I have not really printed with too much at all, especially Ninja Flex and Cheetah being the flexible versions, or, or the more flexible of them all. So Armadillo has a shore hardness of 70 75D, so it's a fairly rigid material. That's this blue material. And I printed this at 20 millimeters a second for the initial layer and then 40 millimeters a second for the infill layers. Uh, I turned off retraction for all these different materials since they are at least flexible or this one being kind of a semi-flex. But I honestly think that for this one with how uh, sort of non-flexible this material is in comparison to the other ones, you can get away with some retraction, but to play it safe, I did turn it off. As far as layer cooling goes, I left layer cooling off on the first layer, and I believe the second as well, and then after that I had 100% uh, layer cooling fan as well, and that's across the board. Uh, the next material which is Cheetah has a 95A shore hardness. Um, this is much more flexible than the Armadillo at 75D. So that one I printed at 240 Celsius with a 15 millimeters per second initial layer, uh, 25 millimeter per second infill, and again, no retraction. And then lastly, Ninja Flex, which is the beast of the material. Uh, it's the most flexible material I've ever printed with at 85A shore hardness. Uh, I printed that at 235 Celsius at 15 millimeters a second for the initial layer and a slow 20 millimeters a second for the remaining infill layers with also no retraction and I tried a few different settings with that going a bit quicker and just had no luck whatsoever I would still run into issues with the uh, filament buckling or just having an issue where it wasn't able to extrude enough material uh, quick enough so let's take a look again this is the first one armadillo with the uh, it's the most stiff material at 75D shore hardness, so it's barely flexible, but this little flexible coupling that I printed um, does show a little bit of flex. The main ones that I was excited to print really were Cheetah and the Ninja Flex. So Cheetah I went ahead and printed with next. Uh, I used also blue painter's tape for all of these materials. Um, I would have used something like probably regular build tech, but the build tech sheets that I had were um, pretty jacked up and for PEI I don't recommend printing flexibles on PEI because um, sticking is not the issue it's that it typically sticks too well and can actually uh, kind of form and bond with the PEI material which could destroy your sheet so blue painters tape does a really good job but as you can see here I was incredibly excited um, to print out this material and just see how flexible it was this was uh, again one of the best successes I've had with a flexible material um, Certainly, if you upgrade the extruder to something like a Bontech or even like the EZR extruder from CME CNC, you can likely push your speeds even quicker. But for just the $30 direct drive upgrade that I did, um, it made a huge difference from being able to print this material uh, at all. So, uh, one thing I also ended up doing was after the first two prints uh, and that first cheetah print, I noticed that I was having still a bit of issues with extrusion. So, I swapped out the nozzle. Um, just to a spare brass nozzle I had laying around that had never been printed with before and that that solved a lot of the issues for me um, I was getting much more consistent extrusion So what I'm thinking is is that potentially the nozzle I had on had a little bit of gunk on it Which was again with this material being so soft causing issues with it being able to flow smoothly so once I swapped out the nozzle to a brand new brass nozzle, the material was flowing much better. And this being Ninja Flex and incredibly flexible, uh, was it printed beautifully, and I was incredibly ecstatic about that. Um, I also did increase the flow from you know 100% flow to about 105, 106. That seemed to help a little bit as well. So um, I would suggest kind of playing around with that. The other thing I noticed too is that you don't want your nozzle as close to the bed. Uh, as when you're printing with the hard material because if this soft material is not able to push itself completely out that will uh, even more so cause it to buckle on itself or to clog so you want to make sure that you either raise your Z or lower your bed altogether um, 
I printed out a NinjaFlex case for my iPhone XR and it turned out freaking awesome. Um, there was a little bit of cleanup on the overhangs as you can see across there on like the volume buttons. Um, but other than that, it was insane. And when I took this, <laughs> when I took this off of the bed, I was, I was crazy excited. I uh, actually called, called Erin and threw the case at her so that way she can see it because uh, again, in all my 3D printing, which I've been doing for a lot of years now, flexibles have always been like the one that's been a pretty big pain to me that I've just decided, eh, I'm not really too interested in printing with. But um, I certainly think that with a direct drive setup and maybe a bit a better extrusion system, I might try to implement some more flexible materials into more of my projects. But a huge shout out to Ninja Tech for supplying me with these materials. I'll place links in the description down below if you do decide you want to purchase any of these three. Um, Cheetah, again, being a bit easier to print, but still giving you a lot of flex, and Ninja Tech, uh, Ninja Flex being the most flexible of them all. Uh, but yeah, it was really awesome. So for protective cases, it's great. I also went ahead and printed out with uh, the little bit of remaining cheetah material that I had a lens cap for my uh, Yi Light, which is basically like a GoPro uh, Chinese clone that I use for some of my time lapses. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out some other videos. And if you enjoy the content and you want to support me on Patreon, there will be a link for that. And if nothing else, don't forget to subscribe for more awesome videos. And I will see you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.